and welcome back to Auto Social UK. So this was a bit of a surprise video. I only found out I'd be doing this at the beginning of the week. But if you're going to have a surprise, this is the one that you want. Very kindly, Marriott Motor Group have invited me to take a test drive of the Audi e-tron GT. And I am literally so excited. Very similar than when I drove the mach -E. I do have a very short amount of time. So this is gonna be a quick video, less specs, more of a first impressions. But as first impressions go, it doesn't get much better than this. Electric car styling often splits opinions, but I haven't met a single person that doesn't think the GT looks absolutely amazing. And it looks fantastic finished in this blue colour. In fact, if you get up close, there's little flecks of pink in the paint, which I absolutely love. This is the Vosprong edition, which is the German edition. There's only a few of these that have come over to the UK, and you won't be able to spec these ones up from factory. This one has 21 inch alloy wheels, which you get standard on the RS. On the usual GT, you get 20 inches as standard. So this one has the upgraded versions, but come on, do you need any bigger than 20? The bladed wheels help improve aerodynamics by minimizing drag and maximizing efficiency. Its silhouette is sleek and aggressive. It appears to stand out and blend in all at once. Audi described it as being sculpted by the wind, which, as pretentious as it sounds, I can kind of see. The grill can take some getting used to. It's not quite as boring as some of the electric cars on the market, but it could still come across as slightly dull. However, the reinterpretation of the honeycomb grill is a welcome design addition to liven things up slightly. It also benefits from some matrix LED headlights with Audi's laser light technology and offers a rather pretty light show or perhaps a rather pricey light show. Something that I love about the GT is it's very specifically Audi. You can see it has design tweaks of the RS models and even the R8. It's got this beautiful design, which the chief officer of design at Audi said that he thinks this is the best car that he's ever designed. And I would have to agree, it looks absolutely fantastic. And it's definitely a head turner. Whether you prefer this or the Taycan, it's going to come completely down to taste. I don't think anything could come close to the Porsche, but the GT really does look a premium product and certainly gets its own personality despite being on the same platform. Interior is definitely Audi's forte. Everything looks and feels extremely high quality. This model does, however, have the extended leather pack and without it, I'm inclined to wonder if it would have felt a little less worth the money for the price tag. Audi have managed to get the perfect blend between digital screens, but also physical buttons. There's a 12.3 inch virtual cockpit behind the wheel, switchable between different layouts, classic, sport and e-tron. You also get a 10.1 inch touchscreen. Everywhere equipment is as expected, including things like adaptive cruise control, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, adjustable mood lighting and a Bang & Olufsen sound system. The GT actually has two motors, one on the front and one on the rear, and they both have a separate output. The front has a maximum output of 235 brake horsepower, while the rear makes a maximum of 429. But you can't just add those together to get a combined output. Combined, it makes a maximum of 469 brake horsepower, but it also does benefit from some overboost which will bring the car up to 523 brake horsepower for 2.3 seconds. After that initial overboost, you then reduce down to the standard car's brake horsepower. But this car doesn't feel anything but slow. They have those two motors to give you that extra boost when you get up to a certain speed. With a lot of EVs, you reach kind of 40 miles per hour and then it slowly starts to tail off whereas the GT continues to pull the whole way. Being an Audi, it gets a superior Quattro four-wheel drive system, which forms part of the drivetrain setup, with all four wheels permanently driven, unless efficiency mode is selected when the e-tron GT becomes front-wheel drive only. As with the Porsche, there's a 93.4 kilowatt total capacity battery with an 83.7 kilowatt usable section, making 298 miles of range. 
but realistically, if we're basing it off of the Taycan, we can expect to be closer to 230 miles. All models will take a 270 kilowatt charge, which, if you can find one, will take the battery from 5 to 80% in as little as 23 minutes, which really does ease the worry of long journeys. For both driver and passenger, this car is incredibly comfortable. Even though it has that fast acceleration, it doesn't feel thrashy or you don't feel like you're being crashed about when you're going over bumps. It's actually extremely comfortable. One of my favourite things about the GT is it just feels so driver focused. You really feel like you're in the cockpit of something like an R8 or an RS variant. You definitely get the connection through the steering wheel that you expect to get from a car with a lot of performance. This car doesn't feel like your everyday EV. This really is a luxury EV and it makes me excited for it being electric. It doesn't make me think, oh, electric. It makes me think, yes, electric. Having just sat in the passenger seat for a little while, Hannah said that it feels really quite big in the passenger seat, which surprised me because in the driver's seat, as I said, it feels very driver focused. But I think that's so clever by Audi. You sit in the passenger seat and it feels so light and airy and that you've got tons of room. And then you get in the driver's seat and you're almost kind of tunneled in, which you'd think would be a bad thing, but I don't think it's a bad thing at all because it just gives you that feel of connection with the car, almost as if you're in a high powered performance or even Hannah said something like a Formula One car because everything's really kind of tucked into you, which I absolutely love. Now here's to address the elephant in the room. The Audi e-tron GT starts at £88,000 and goes all the way up to a very eye-watering £133,000 for the GT RS model. Now that is a lot of money for an Audi and it does make you wonder whether you would rather have the Porsche Taycan for a similar price tag. However, I do think this car does feel every bit worth the money and it really does feel like a premium innovative product. Thank you so much for watching this video today and thank you to Marriott Motor Group for inviting me down to drive the GT. It's been a real pleasure. If you've liked this video, please go ahead and give it a massive thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, then please make sure you go ahead and hit subscribe. Thank you so much and until next time, bye.